Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So, um, as you probably know from the title of this video, today's video is going to be a little bit different because um, I want to share with you a story of my supernatural physical healing. I know. Before I start even saying anything, as you guys know from my Instagram or from uh, this channel, I'm very much interested in health topics, but not just health topics like fitness and food, but actually holistic health. So like mind, body, spirit, soul, whatever, relationships, everything. Some of my knowledge or just like experience, I take from my personal relationship with God. So in today's video, I will share that side of um, my health journey with you. And the story goes back to when I was in secondary school and I was in second class, um, so I was 14 at that time, and I started experiencing this pain in my tailbone um, and I didn't know what it is, so I was like, yeah, let me just not do anything about it, let me ignore it. Um, and kind of like went on with my life. And then suddenly um, it changed. Um, after two weeks, the pain was getting more intense. I couldn't even sit, I couldn't sleep. Um, I was like, the pain was so overwhelming. It's not that kind of pain that you can kind of like take a painkiller um, and for and it will just completely, um, like you can forget about it. No, it was something that was overtaking my life. So I stopped going to school. I went to the doctor, um, doctor's office with my mom. And um, she said that I have this boil, that it's very common for young people um, and that uh, basically she will give me that cream that I need to put on it um, and it will be painful but then um, it, it just needs to, and this is a disclaimer for you, if you're eating anything right now or if you're a very sensitive person, please don't watch that video because it will get disgusting. Like I'm telling you, I'm going to be completely honest with you about everything that was there. Um, so if you're sensitive, stop watching right now. Um, but if your curiosity is stronger, then I'm gonna tell you what happened. So after you put that cream on, it's supposed to explode. Um, and then the liquid, the pus, I don't know even what the name for it is, um, but basically it needs to start coming out of it and then you experience this release because, um, yeah, because it's not big anymore, it's not, so like, it's not red anymore, it's disgusting, I don't even want to go into details, but this is what it was. Um, so then I was like, why do I have it? I asked my doctor, why do I have that thing? And she said to me that she doesn't know that there isn't any like main reason or cause that I can fight when it comes to this thing. So I was at this time, I was already like, that's great. Even back then, I was one of those people who, if I see that something is, um, that something's wrong with me, I want to change it. So like if that, the cause would be my diet or uh, my exercise routine or my lifestyle in general, I would do everything I can to change it but I just couldn't. And I was like in so much fear because she said, um, it's good that you only have, um, have them in one place because some people come all covered in them. So I lived in that fear that, oh, I'm gonna have more of them or um, I don't even know what to tell you. Like after, after I put the cream on and it exploded and it kind of like finished, then um, I had it every single year since. So it was something that was definitely becoming a part of my life and I was scared by it. Um, I, was, I, I didn't even want to sign up for a prom. I didn't want to go um, for winter break or anything like this because I knew that there is, a, there is a huge chance that I will sign up for something and I will get excited and then I won't be able to participate in it because of that disease. Also, let me explain it to you. When you're 14, you're already very insecure. You already feel uncomfortable with your body. You're growing, everything's changing. You're kind of adapting to those changes. And then you have this boil in an intimate place. So like my friends are asking me, why weren't you in school? And I'm like, I had a cold because I don't want to talk about my boil on my butt. You know, that was that kind of situation. And even sharing that with you now isn't easy for me because I've been very anxious about it. And I've been very, very much ashamed of it and I want to speak into people right now who maybe you're watching this video and you have some kind of hidden disease or even not hidden maybe maybe you have acne that you don't like maybe you have depression um, or panic attacks and you reacted in front of your friends and it kind of makes you ashamed of who you are because you kind of um, thought that th this this thing is who I am it's not really um, the disease it's it's me I want to speak into this lie if you are suffering 
is something. This isn't you. This isn't a part of you. This isn't a part of your identity. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. You're a perfect design of God. And whatever you're experiencing right now, this isn't you. So if you feel like people are judging you because of your disease, if you feel like you're judging yourself because of your disease, you need to stop it right now because it won't do anything. Like it won't do any good for you. And I want you to know that. So I had it every time since. I had it before my winter break. I had it every time and I kind of got used to it. From the faith perspective, I was in a weird place of um, questioning God because I've been uh, taught to sing in the church that God is my healer, that he can do everything, but I couldn't see him come through. And it's not like I wasn't praying for healing. Like even though I was 14, I kept praying for healing. I was like asking my parents, why is this happening to me? Why am I experiencing this thing? So then fast forward um, in 18, um, in second class of high school and right before going to Hillsong concert, I ha started having this pain. I thought, if I'm only going to think in a positive way, if I'm going to kind of not give any attention to that, then maybe it just, it won't happen. But it happened. And two weeks after that, I was already um, in the doctor's office. I had to transfer from a childcare into, into the, the, the adult surgeon. So the lady was very strong, had a very strong character. And I said to her, I was like, what, 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 why am I having this? And she said, first of all, I see that you've been using this cream. It's the worst thing ever. It gives you even more pain and it leaves scars on your skin. So you need to throw this thing out of the window. At this point, I'm angry with my previous doctor, but whatever. And then she says that she thinks it's not only the boil, it's actually a cyst inside of my body that is creating the boil that needs operating um, in the hospital. And she said that I shouldn't do it right now because it will take me out of school for three, four months um, because they basically cut you and they leave it open and you need to um, just lay in bed for three months and allow it to heal itself because they can't use the stitches. So I was like, in my head, I was like, God, this can't happen to me. Like I have my final exams in next year. I need to learn. Like I was already behind in school. I was studying biology, chemistry and physics. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't, like, I, I can't let this happen. Um, so um, she said that she won't allow me to go home with this thing. She asked me to sign this paper and she said, I'm gonna cut it right now, but I can't give you any painkillers because I don't know. Um, later on, I think that she didn't want to wait for the painkiller to like actually work. So I went on that table, I rolled my pants down and then she um, started cutting me. Um, and I'm telling you, the scream that came out of me in that moment, I looked at my mom my mom was like, had watery eyes because she was like, what are you doing to my child? And in that moment, I was like, if my mom is crying and I'm singing that God is a good God, why am I experiencing this thing? Why, why can't, like, he's all powerful. He could just say, he could put an end to all of this. I was screaming. The lady was like, stop screaming because you will scare the patients. And I was like, I don't care. At this point, I'm in so much pain. I don't care anymore, okay? Let me be, let me suffer here. Um, that was my um, attitude at that time. And um, I was in so much pain. And she started squeezing the liquid out, um, which was very painful. And then I felt relief from the pain. Um, but I think the trauma from that time, like, it was something I then battled for next um, next few um, months. I was like just coming back to this time and I was afraid of having another boy because she said, if you don't want an operation right now because you're studying, then um, basically if it comes back, you need to come and we need to do the same thing all over again. I finished high school. I, um, uh, I think that, like my last year of high school was the only year when I actually didn't have that boil. Um, and then I started university. So after, after the first year, I got married um, of university. I got married and um, Caleb was like, yeah, you want a gap year, that's great. What would you say if we would go to UK and if we would do this academy there? Cause I think it will really be good for our faith. And I was desperate for some kind of change because I had this strange relationship with God where um, at this point I started questioning him. I started to have more questions. Cause like, understand me, I was like, um, serving in church, singing in church. So that was kind of like, yeah, God is somewhere in there, but I don't really believe that he cares for me. Um, and I understand, I understand my thoughts then. I wouldn't say that they were, that they were actually like good because I didn't even take 
enemy to the equation. I didn't understand that the disease isn't from God. I thought that if he's all powerful, then this is what he wanted for me. So fast forward, we're in UK, first three months, incredible change. I'm experiencing God in a way I haven't experienced him in a while. Um, I see my mistakes from my past in my thinking about him. I learn about how to have a relationship with him. I learn about healing as well. I learn all of those great things and um, I get free from so many different things. Even from that table situation, I had to get rid of um, unforgiveness. I had to get rid of different things like that. Um, and I dealt with it and then it felt like a last stop to being completely free was to get rid of that fear that I will have a boil in my body and that God doesn't care. And so three months in, I started experiencing this pain in my tailbone and I'm like, what on earth? Why is this happening to me again? I felt like my, my world is crumbling down. I felt like, um, like there is no hope for me anymore. Um, and I felt shame. I felt like I can't speak to anyone about it because it's in this intimate area but I decided to speak about it to someone. So in Academy, I had this great tutor um, and a tutor group, and I said it to my girls and they prayed for me um, where I didn't want to pray for myself. Um, Cause I was like, I, I just can't deal with any more disappointment. Like, look, I have this great relationship with God and now I'm gonna be let down again and I don't want it anymore. Um, so they prayed for me. And then um, my tutor said that maybe I should start being grateful and I, I should start um, just switching my mindset from or this is very bad and I'm scared into God is in control whatever's happening he'll provide with money if I can't work he'll use this situation for good I started understanding that it's not God that wishes me the worst but it's actually um, the enemy um, and I realized that like the devil doesn't want me to be grateful to God. He wants to limit my worship to God. He wants to make me uh, feel like I can't rely on him, like I can't trust him. And this is exactly what happened. Like, do you think I was grateful when I was on that table being cut by someone? Do you think I was grateful when I couldn't go for winter break because of my disease? Do you think I was grateful um, that I felt awkward in my body? I felt like I am damaged in some way. No, I wasn't grateful. So I decided to make a different thing. Um, this time I decided to um, go on my knees and pray and be grateful and and speak out declar declarations about um, how I will never leave God no matter what's happening I will always trust him that he's taking care of my body I will always trust him with my life um, and it was three weeks of praying at work in the toilet um, when anxiety came um, it was kind of like okay I feel like I have so much faith right now and an hour later I'm just in this pit uh, crying out to God feeling like nothing good can come out of, out of this and then I just felt like I'm being matured in that time and I started being even grateful for that thing. I started being grateful for the fact that I can experience God as my provider, um, as my healer, that I have um, a possibility to know him in a way that I wouldn't be able to know him if not for this disease. That was the first time in my life when the boil and the hurt that I had experienced shrinked itself and it disappeared. I'm standing here right now to tell you that it doesn't matter what kind of disease you have. And it might sound like very not what you want to do because I felt like, oh my gosh, that's the last thing I want to do. Uh, but I kind of been matured in my faith because of the experience I had. Um, so I just want to encourage you that in everything, whatever you experience, always give glory to God, always give thanks to him, always trust that he is good. Even if he doesn't heal you, like our relationship with God cannot be um, based on what we're um, experiencing um, on the, the circumstances that we're in. Um, it needs to be stronger than this. Even in the storm, even in the dark valley, even in the sickness, in the divorce, whatever you're going through, God is good. And I'm testifying because I, in that moment when I laid down everything, the comfort that came, the healing that happened in my body is something I can't even explain. That was the first time when I felt like I know what this faith thing is about, that it's not about me having a comfortable life, but it's about me choosing Jesus and choosing God, even when I don't understand, even in the deep, dark moments. Um, so that is my encouragement for you. There's so many other things I would like to share with you, but this video is way too long. Even now, I might need to cut it. Um, 
So I'm gonna make other videos about healing as well. Um, if you like this video, then stay tuned for other videos. Um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.